Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'll be showing you how you can create a player list for your multiplayer game. So that's basically going to show us who's in our room and what their latency is. So I think this is part 10. Yeah, we've come uh, quite a long way from our Bed Bones basic project, which is pretty cool. So yeah, so basically before we had just a variable called latency in our controller. Now we're going to need to change that to global latency. So let's do that first and update all of the usages. So there was one in our script handle coming packets. Uh, there it is. I think there was one in our GUI. There it is. I don't think that's about all of them. We might get some errors later if there's a few creeping around, but I'm pretty sure this is it. So right now we have a step event that pretty much asks the server for a test packet that we can then calculate the time difference between, and that's our latency. So that's happening right over here. So that happens uh, 30 times a second because that's our room speed. So there's two ways we could accomplish this task of a playlist. We could either hold down a key and then we send off a request to the server asking it for the latency values and player names of everyone in our room. But that seems to be like it's going to be doing a lot of work and there might be a bit of lag involved in between that. So what I'm going to do rather is every five seconds perhaps I'm going to be sending off a message to the server saying, hey server, I'm this player, I'm sending my ID and this is my current latency. Then the server is going to send that bit of information to all the clients and it's going to update some sort of variable within the object remote player. And then whenever me, as a player requesting to know what the latency and playlist looks like, I hold down P, for example, it pops out and it just lists simply player names and latencies of all the remote players because all that data is now stored on my side. So I know exactly what it is without having to hit the server every time I hold down P. So that's the way we're going to be doing it. So let's go ahead into our create. And I'm going to be creating an alarm here. Um, let's see, alarm one. Let's do that every five seconds. Let's add that event, alarm one, grabbing some code. So this is uh, tell the server what our latency is. Okay, buffer seek. That's our global buffer, buffer seek start zero okay get to the beginning buffer right to the global buffer it's going to be a tag that's a u8 um let's go over to our server script and coming packets let's see what we can use we've got an eight here so we could use a nine let's see if nine is being used on the client side oh it is so let's go ten let's go ten so we can have a ten ten going on each side so we're going to send a 10 then next let's write a u32 we're going to say hopefully um, a user doesn't have a latency that fills up a whole unsigned integer 32 size because glory they're going to have big lag <laughs> so this is our global latency that should be more than enough then we're going to do network send packet okay so that's going to be the socket of object controller so we can just say socket there we're going to send the global buffer and the size let's do buffer tell global buffer you know, i should probably create a, a function that can just give me the size i can type in one thing because i mean we've always got global buffer and we've got buffer maybe let's do that now um let's say oh my goodness what's going on here SCR get buffer size and let's just return buffer tell global buffer and then I can use this here instead easy so as we go I'll, I'll update all of these to script get buffer size as our function and then obviously we want this alarm to continue doing its thing every five seconds every five seconds is going to be telling that server hey server here is my latency go tell everyone else okay so let's jump over into serverland let's intercept this 10 and this latency 
and uh, fire it off to all the other clients. Okay, so let's expand this, scroll all the way down. Let's create, oops, case 10, break. Okay, so we need to intercept the latency here. So that was buffer read from the buffer being passed into this function. Um, it was a buffer U32. There we go. Let's give ourselves some space. Um, let's say if our play equals no one. Let's try to find the player that sent it. Because sometimes these with conditions can get a little bit complicating. So with all instances of object player in the room, or in the game, connected to the server, if self dot player socket equals socket player equals id okay so this is an interesting piece of code i want to see if we've used something like this before we might have actually yeah sort of like this when we were let's see changing the room so we're using the socket being passed into this script and we're comparing it to the socket stored in the instance of object player. So if we expand these up, there should be an object player over here. You should have a socket, player socket. And if they match, then there we go. This is the guy. This is the guy we're interested in, which is really awesome. Because remember, this message coming through from the client comes through into the controller, which is fed in through the networking event, which does hit this. Oops, not this guy. Uh, this guy at the bottom. And that's where the socket comes in, and we pass it through to this script. So that one is a unique identifier right there in itself, which is really cool stuff. So now we've got the ID of the person. That's the player. So let's add a condition here. If player is not equal to no one, so obviously he's been set. It's just a little a little catch over there. Player dot player latency equals latency. Great. So we're updating the player's play latency variable with the value being passed in through this case. While we're here, let's go to object player. Let's create this variable before we forget. And let's initialize it to zero. There we go. Great stuff. So the next step is let's tell all other players about this change. Okay, so notice that. Let's tell the players about this change. Now, we've used that phrase before. So we can just grab code, tell the players about this change. We can grab this exact code, slap it on in here, done. We're going to be sending a 10 back. We're going to be sending a U32, which is the player's identifier. So let's say this player dot player identifier. And then next, we're going to be sending the player dot player latency and the rest is the same okay so that's going to be going to everyone else except the person that sent this request so remember 10 we've got a player id and we've got the latency we can get rid of this white space that's going all the way to the client side let's go into handling coming packets find out where that's going on right at the bottom let's say case 10 break Let's grab two variables here, slap them in over here. Let's call one um, the PID. Let's call the second one the latency, both U32s. Now let's uh, find the owner of this message. We can actually copy this piece of code right over here. With object remote player, if remote player ID equals PID, let's remove all of this and say remote player latency equals latency. Okay, so that's going to update the latency or the remote player latency variable in this remote player to that of the latency passed in to this case. So while we're here, let's copy this variable name. Let's jump into object remote player. And let's initialize that to zero. And just like that, we're now sending that message all around. Everyone will know of our latency so they can display this latency at any point in time. So let's go ahead and create some sort of object that we'll use to handle the display of these latencies. Let's call it object playlist. 
let's create a draw GUI event. Let's uh, draw set font to our FNT small. Yeah. Let's do a draw set set color. Um, let's make this C white. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and draw names. Var XX equals 650. Var YY equals 100. Draw text XXYY. And this is going to be names. These are our headings. We're creating some sort of grid here. Firstly, let's start off with our own name. Let's put ourselves at the top. Perhaps even later on you can alphabetize this if you want. String global name. Then we're going to do a for var i equals zero. i is less than. Um, let's do an instance number of object remote player. Oh, sorry, that's a lowercase p. i plus plus. Oh, it's supposed to be var. There we go. Then for this, we need to increment our Y axis by 40 pixels. We're going to grab the remote player. We can use instance find to do that. And we can use I to grab the first to nth remote player. Then we can actually copy this line of code and paste it down here xxyy string object remote player dot remote player name cool then next draw latencies xx equals 950 yy equals 100 I measured these earlier, so that's where I'm thumb sucking them from. <laughs> Draw text, pretty much this line here. Latency. Should actually take this and put it there. Same here. So there's a bit of a gap. Then let's copy this and paste it down here. And this is going to be our global latency. Everything else is the same. YY plus equals 40. And in this case, you would just change name to remote player latency. Good stuff. So now that this object is created, let's go to our object player. So we need to figure out a way that we can show this. So what I like is to have a key that you can hold down. And when you release it, it goes away. So hold it down. It creates this playlist. We can see the player's latencies and their names. And we release that key. It disappears again. So that way we can press a key quickly, see someone's name, release it, get back to the action. We don't have to somehow escape or click something or push a button a second time to remove it so it doesn't distract too much away from the gameplay so let's go into our step event okay so we've got lots of code here to handle the physics and whatnot we can put this below the update coordinates let's say here if keyboard check um, let's use the ordinate of p Wait, is that too many that was the right amount if not instance exists, object player list, nope, player list, that's the one. So if playlist doesn't exist, well then, instance create, x, y, object player list. It doesn't matter where we create it, because remember, it's going to be drawing it at a very specific Location and that's draw GUI, so it's going to be right at the top layer there. So let's put an else here and let's copy this code. If it does exist, we're going to say with because there can only ever be one, so that's great. We can use the with to qu quickly grab the only instance that exists and we can say instance destroy just like that and it'll be gone forever until we create it again fantastic stuff so i'm gonna run through that one more time that's pretty much it actually it's very quick stuff so in our controller we have a we have an alarm 
that sends our latency to the server once every five seconds. That is getting intercepted by the case 10 in, in, in handling coming packets right over there. And that tells all other players that the player in question has updated his latency. That's going to be flying all the way back to the other clients to open up handling coming packets to 10 over here, where it's going to locate the correct remote player and update his latency or his remote player latency variable with data. Then I'm playing along on my screen and I say, hey, let me see who's in the room. It's one of my friends joined. Um, what's the latency? They say they're getting a bit of lag. That's happening in my local player because remember, we don't want people to be in the main menu and tap P and then there they can see things. So it's only going to happen if the local player exists. Um, and that's going on in the step event right over here. If it doesn't exist, create it. If it does exist, then delete it. And that basically just does some looping action on all the remote players and displays all their stuff. Now, while I was talking through that, I just remembered, well, what happens if the user's typing? So let's go back to controller. Let's see in here, there should be, here we go, global typing. So let's make sure that it doesn't show this. If the player is typing, so let's say if not global typing, and then let's wrap this all in that condition, just like that. Okay, cool. So by tapping P, as long as we're not typing, we can do all this cool stuff. But if we are typing, then it's not going to happen. Great. So let's actually test this out and see what it looks like. Should be pretty cool. Right. So I'm going to fire up a server with two clients and let's see if this works. Okay. So let's say JP, one, two, three, four, five. And let's say Sam, one, two, three, four, five. So Sam is going to be red and I'm going to be green. Cool. So I'm running around. I'm at the bottom here. If I hold down P, there we go. It says my latency is 17 or 16 and Sam's is 17. If we go to Sam on this side, he's moving around, he's doing his thing. He holds down P and he sees himself as 17 or 16 and me on the other end as a 17. Now that should change to 16 depending on if it is 16 when that five second period elapses. But anyway, we can see that it is working and we let go of P, it disappears. So they look, it went to 25. So that about wraps up this tutorial. As you can see, it's quite simple to do this thing and I do recommend updating the variables of the remote players and then just showing them on demand when it comes to certain features such as this. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future networking and or other videos, place them in the comments below or send me a PM and I can see if I can make it happen. If you like this video as well as many of my other videos, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. You can find the project files for this tutorial straight in the description. Give the link a click and you can download them. If you want to try out a really cool arcade game, Element Earth is out on the Amazon App Store. Links in the description. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.